Today we are talking stamp inks and which stamp inks are going to work best with which journal. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. Today I wanted to take some time and do a video on stamping in a bullet journal. Now this actually turned out to be a lot of information, so I'm going to be breaking the videos up and I'm going to be starting off with explaining what the different ink types are and then the different journals that they work in. So I have grabbed a 80 GSM moleskin, a 90 GSM loge term, 100 GSM bullet journal, 120 GSM bullet journal and the 160 GSM bullet journal as well and we're going to test out the different inks and see which will work best. But before we get into that I am going to talk about a dye ink versus a pigment ink versus a distress ink. So these are dye inks. This is from Stamping Up and this is a Memento fade resistant dye ink. I don't have very many of the dye ink pads and this video is going to explain why. Here we have the two dye inks. Now these are considered a standard ink in the crafting world and they are dye based and water based. These two in particular are water based and because they're water based it means that they soak into the page and they dry very quickly. Now these will fade over time. This one says it's fade resistant dye ink. I haven't tested that out or I haven't gone back into old scrapbooks to see but they don't tend to last as long as say the pigment inks do. The other difference between the two is that this pad tends to be kind of hard and I'll show you the comparison with the... so this is the pigment ink that is spongy and then this is the dye ink that is kind of, it's not as spongy as the pigment ink. And so those are our dye inks. Next up, we have our pigment ink pads. Now, as you saw in the previous section, the pigment ink pads tend to be spongier. The colors are a lot thicker and creamier than the dye inks, and they tend to last longer, so they won't fade over time as quickly as the dye inks. They resist water, which you will see when we get to the coloring in video and so they're great to use with watercolors as well. They do take a lot longer to dry so you do have to be careful and watch out for smudging. You can heat set it with an embossing gun or you can just wait a little bit to let it dry. The white pigment inks are particularly bad for that. I do a lot of white stamping in my blackout journal and I will sometimes just let it dry overnight. So yes, they're very thick, they're very creamy, very opaque and I tend to use these in my bullet journal and again we're gonna go and test it out and you will see why. So now we have the, these are the hybrid inks. This is a solvent ink and then this is a waterproof dye ink. So I kept this one separate because I kept it separate when I did my stamping, but this is an acid-free permanent ink waterproof. And so unlike the other dye inks that are water-based, this one isn't. So you are able to do watercoloring over top of it, but again, we'll get to that in a different video. The stays on is a solvent ink. So this one you can pretty much use on any surface. You're still going to want to heat set it as well, but it's kind of got that hard surface like the dye inks do and this one smells so you're going to want to use this in a well ventilated area and then these are the hybrids and um, this is the most popular hybrid ink brand it's a hybrid of dye ink and pigment ink that are fused together using these stamps you're not going to get as clear or crisp of an image as using the other kinds of inks we've talked about and that's what they're designed to do they're designed to give that distressed look. They are super fun to use. I tend to use mine to create backgrounds but we'll have a look and see how they hold up in the bullet journals. So the journals I am using today thanks to my bullet journal review I have a wide variety. This is an 80 GSM moleskin journal that we're going to test the inks in. This is a Loish term 1917. This is an Artist Life 100 GSM. This is the Artist Life 120 GSM, and then I'll be using my 160 GSM Archer and Olive notepad. And we'll use these papers to see how they hold up. 
I wanted to make sure I got a variety of stamps for you so that you could see the quality of the stamp as well as how it reacts on the page. This is an alphabet stamp from Studio Caligo. This is a plan on it school edition from Lawn Fawn. We'll be using one of the words and some of the images. This is a stamp set by Feed Your Craft. It's called Pattern Play. I'll be using the solid stamp so that you can again see the quality of the ink and also how much bleeds through the page when you use it. And then I wanted to grab some super detailed stamps again to give you the idea of how the ink works and how it looks. And so these are the stamp sets that I've decided to use. So we're going to now go ahead and do the stamping and then we can talk about the results. So looking at the moleskin, and this is the ADGSM paper, there is some smudging, but not a lot, especially with the memento, there's very little smudging. And if we look at the bleed through, we can see that the memento bled through a lot. Even on the smaller images, there's some feathering and bleed through and tons of ghosting the same thing with the stamping up maybe not quite as much bleed through as the memento but it's still there even with the detailed images this is the loish tome this wasn't an even surface so i thought i'd re-stamp it so that you can get a look again there is a little bit of smudging i smudged the a the stamping up dye ink smudged a lot more than the memento did but it still doesn't smudge quite as much as the pigment ink and if you look at bleed through the memento bled through quite a bit um, and tons of ghosting as well the Stamping up stamp pad didn't bleed through quite as much, but there is some bleed through on the details, especially where the ink pooled on the stamp. Now we have the 100 GSM journal. Again, not as much smudging as we've seen in the Loish term or the moleskin. Again, it sinks into the page. And if we look at posting and bleed through, the memento still kind of bled through, especially on the more solid shapes that you can see there. But otherwise, it's mostly just ghosting. I don't know if you can see the ghosting. Now we have the 120 GSM journal. Um, again, a little bit of smudging, but not, not much. And this paper is a lot creamier. I don't know, the texture is just a bit different. So you can see that the stamp inks have gone on differently. We can compare it to the Memento and you can see how this comes across a little bit more gray, a little creamier than say on the moleskin. So that's just a testament to how the ink reacts differently on the different papers. Here on the other hand, blue is a lot more crisp versus a little bit more faded on this kind of paper. Looking at the bleed through and ghosting, no bleed through but a lot of ghosting especially by the memento ink pad over here and then some ghosting by the stamping up ink pad. Now we have our 160 GSM notepad page, no smudging as you can see and the colors are a lot more vibrant. Then they came out on the ivory colored moleskin. So you can see that. And as is normal with the 160 GSM, there's no bleed through. There's a little bit of ghosting, but it's very minimal. And that's just because the 160 GSM paper can handle it. But it's there, it's just, you can't see it in this light, I'm sure. And it's very minimal. So now we're gonna take a look at the pigment ink pads. There is a lot more smudging happening with the pigment ink pads and that's because it does sit on the page a lot longer. The Studio G I had the most trouble with because it is just so saturated. It's unbelievably saturated. So if you're using this one you want to be very careful <laughs> with it because it it was very saturated. We're going to take a look at the ghosting and the bleed through. So again, this is a Studio G where there was transfer onto the other page. There was a ton of bleed through, which is more to do with the thinness of the pages. The pages, these pages just absorb anything. So the Let's color wasn't quite as bad. There is some bleed through on the more solid stamps, but otherwise it's just mostly ghosting. And then we have the Versifying, the Craft Smart and the Brilliance. The Versafine bled through and ghosted, the Craftsmart mostly just ghosted, and the Brilliance, there is some bleed through on the solid shapes, but otherwise it's mostly just ghosting. So here you get a bit of a sneak peek at how these inks held up. This is the clear, and then this bottom one is the Color Theory, which you can get from Studio Calico. 
Now, the Claire is just a reverse image. You might as well <laughs> not even bother with the Claire on this one. Ton of bleed through. Ghosting isn't even an issue because of the bleed through. And then this is the Color Theory, which actually held up really, really well and is just heavily ghosted as opposed to bleed through. So that's something to keep in mind. Then we have the Leuchtturm. Again, we have the Let's Color, the Studio G, the Craftsmart, the Versifying. We have the Claire, the Brilliance, and the Color Theory. As can be expected, as we saw with the Moleskin, the Studio G bled through and ghosted. The Versifying bled through and ghosted. And then the Craftsmart and the Color Theory just ghosted. And then for the Brilliance, Clear and Color Theory, the Clear has, again, a ton of bleed through, a ton of ghosting. The Brilliance did really well, it just ghosted. And the Color Theory did really well, and it just ghosted. My first bullet journal was a Loish term, and when I started stamping in it, I was using the Brilliance, and this is why... Um, the ghosting is manageable as opposed to having it bleed through as well. This is the 100 GSM journal. So we'll see how this held up. The Studio G and the set leaf was the Versafine ghosted and bled through. This just ghosted, but the Studio G bled through. The Craft Smart and the Let's Color, just very light ghost, nothing too serious. And then the Brilliance, the Claire and the Color Theory. The Claire bled through and ghosted. The Brilliance and the Color Theory did fantastic. There's a light ghosting of the Versafine, but there is no ghosting of the Color Theory. Now we have 120 GSM. Again, lots of smudging because this paper is even thicker and smoother. So again, lots of smudging. The Studio G and the Versafine still ghosted. The Studio G bled through and the Versafine still ghosted. The Craftsmart and the Let's Color, very light ghosting, but you wouldn't even notice if you were using this as your notebook. And then we have the Claire, the Brilliance, and the color theory. The clear again bled through and ghosted. The brilliance and the color theory you can't even see. There's a tiny little bit of ghosting with the brilliance in the alphabet stamp but otherwise there's, you can't see especially with the color theory. Then we have the 160 GSM. Lots of smudging. <laughs> the Studio G ghosted. <laughs> And everything else is fine. The Versafine didn't even show up. The Claire has some ghosting as well. So Studio G and the Claire ghosted on the 160 GSM and everything else is fine. So I use my Versafine for stamping in my 160 GSM journal. The biggest standout for me by far has been the Color Theory. And again, this is available from Studio Calico, I believe. And I actually might go and buy a full stamp pad of the Color Theory because I'm just so impressed with how well it holds up in the different journals. So now we are moving on to our hybrid inks, which are the Distress Inks, the Solvent Ink, and the Archival Waterproof Dye Ink, and see how those hold up. So again, we have the Oxide, the Archival, the Distress Ink, and the Solvent Ink. The Oxide ink bled through and ghosted, the Archival ink ghosted, and the Distress ink has a little bit of bleed through and a lot of ghosting. Again, there's a tiny little bleed through there as well. And the Solvent ink... <laughs> the Solvent ink is a lot of bleed through and ghosting. Now we have the Lewish term. So the Oxide ghosted and bled through, the Distress Ink ghosted, and the Archival Ink mostly just heavy ghosting. And these all smudged except for the Archival and the, the Distress Ink didn't smudge. The Solvent Ink smudged as well as ghosted and there is some bleed through, especially where the ink pooled on the stamp. Now we have the 100 GSM. The Oxide, Distress Oxide, bled through and ghosted. The Archival just has some light ghosting and the Distress Ink has some light ghosting. 
The solvent ink has ghosting and bleed through as well. 120 GSM, there is bleed through and ghosting from the oxide ink. The distressing is nothing. <laughs> the archival ink has very light ghosting. The solvent ink bled through and ghosted as well. This is the 160 GSM paper. The oxide has light ghosting and everything else there's no ghosting or bleed through by either the distress ink or the archival ink. And the solvent ink has light ghosting but it shouldn't bother you too much. So as you can tell the thicker pages hold up better to the inks in general but you're going to want to stick to the pigment inks and even then not all pigment inks are created equal. My go-to's for the pigment inks in the journals would be the Color Theory, the Brilliance and the Versafine. These definitely held up the best. In terms of bullet journals if you're using a Loish term, you should be okay, especially if you stick to the Color Theory or the Brilliance ink pad. If you are in a mole skin, I wouldn't stamp in my journal, at least not directly in it. Um, I think even gluing the pages together, you might run into issues because there was some transfer of some of the inks. So definitely either stamp outside your journal and stick it into your notebook or just forego stamping. <laughs> So I hope you found today's video helpful. In the next stamping video I do, we'll look at how the different inks do with the different mediums. I'll be using Crayola Super Tips, watercolor brush pens, I'll be using Sharpie markers just to see how it goes, pencil crayons, watercolor pencils and watercolor paints and we'll take a look and see how the inks hold up. So thank you so much for watching today and I hope to see you next time.